Yo. He's not real. He's not real. I I I try to figure figure something out with like a voice modulator, but I couldn't figure it out in time for the show. So we're just gonna have to do just us us two. That's uh, technical difficulties on my 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 part. I actually, I think last year was also similarly uh, busy because I was looking back at the Discord for um, just to like see what time the deadline was last year. And Hua said there were like 15 trades in the last week. Um, I, that's like more quantity wise than uh, this year, but you know, arguably some of the bigger ones might have happened this year. But yeah, I mean, ever since we got Slack and Discord, I think pretty much, you know, every trade deadline and pretty much every trade season has been pretty, pretty ridiculous. And this year was definitely no, no exception to that. It does, it does, yeah, it does feel that way. Yeah, I mean, I, we said it all year, like, you know, we had a lot of depth, but, you know, not not the top, top, you know, guys that could go off for like 30, 40 points in a given week. And, you know, that we were working on that not just this week, but pretty much all year. But, you know, we had to like, you know, pick and choose what what opportunities to, to try to take and whatnot. And um, coming up on this deadline, obviously, you don't we don't have that much time to, to think and like see what, um, you know, Oh, maybe this guy is going to be like really good, like second half of the season. Like you know, we have to go on the information that we have, and uh, you know, get Russell Wilson and uh, Devonte Adams really were two of the guys that we thought were tops of their position. So those were, you know, we, we already talked about the the Wilson deal uh, last year, uh, last week, but um, but yeah, th those are yeah, we we're trying to get top top tier guys, and you know, you know, I I still don't really like th that we had to you know give up. A lot on paper but in terms of what um those players meant to us just because we have guys that could you know a Devonte parker that could just step in and be our fourth receiver and stuff just because of the depth like you know it does hurt a little bit less um you know to give up you know what seems like a a big package but like to, to us it was just depth so yeah so we're pretty happy with the deals we 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 made in the last couple of weeks
Yep, yep. It's on the under the old deal, so like uh, the price is very, very reasonable. Um, you know, the new deals like minimum raises are like nine bucks, eight bucks. You know, depending on how many years you give. So it it is nice to have that you know small, very cost control guy that you know probably would go for at least over you know twenty five, thirty, probably on open market at least. You know, depending on how he finishes. Um, but what what I really like for Harlem here is you know it it is obviously a sell move. Anytime you sell you know a Devonte Adams type player, you know you're not gonna get better necessarily as a team but at the same time maybe this team didn't get too much worse because you know they did have a huge hole at quarterback um you know cam Newton has had some bad weeks uh Minshew um benched although cam just had a pretty decent week i think um and you know rivers is up and down too so you know that stabilizes it there and then you know while those two receivers don't make up for Devonte adams by by no means it you know it does make their maybe third and fourth receivers a little bit more um you know, steady and like uh, trustworthy week to week. So I, like this is kind of like, um, you know, the Virginia capital region trade we saw a long time ago. But obviously, I think it's a smaller scale on both sides because, um, you know, Herbert and Galladay are, you know, you know, I would say better. But also, you know, Cook, Cook is Dalvin Cook is also, I think, you know, such a cheat code right now that this is basically a scaled down version. Uh, I think Harlem still keeps themselves in the race. Um, if a lot of things go right in, in a playoff week for them, you know, or, you know, down the stretch, this is a team that still could, you know, upset a team just because it, it, it is a little bit more well-rounded and, you know, they would need some big Matt Ryan games, but like, you know, that kind of stuff could happen at least, you know? Um, but also while at the same time picking up some pretty good keepers for, you know, next year, I think. It does, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if, if, I mean, if a lot of things go right for this team, which is like McCaffrey coming back by, you know, playoff time and, you know, pretty much a lot of these guys have to hit their ceiling performances, uh, which is like, you know, lower and a lot less likely than, I guess, one Devontae Adams hitting his ceiling performances. But at the same time, like, you know, it, it does give them a pretty good chance, I think. And, you know, with their schedule, they had, um, I think, Mars... Uh, yeah, Mars, LIC, Oakland, and Virginia. So, you know, I, I think they have a pretty good shot at making playoffs. They're 5-4, and I, I think the team is still intact. It wasn't like a complete breakdown of a, of, of their roster. So, you know, I, I think, yeah, I think they were a little bit stuck because at 5-4, and four, it, it's kind of weird to sell, like, completely because you're in a playoff spot. Um, but I also think, you know, how strong uh, Capital Region looks, uh, like we'll get to that later, but like how strong they look probably influenced them to, you know, go for more of a deal where you go halfway in both directions instead of going, you know, full out, like let's commit all our resources and try to get like more talent or, you know, like selling off a lot of talent and getting back like, you know, players that can't contribute this year. Um, so I think they were kind of stuck and they kind of made the best of uh, the situation they had by kind of, you know, kind of going both ways at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I think anytime, anytime you see like two deals kind of like that, you have to think, okay, like maybe this is something that, um, you know, teams are starting to implement as strategies. And I think a lot of it could be, you know, the new keeper system makes it, you know, profitable to have more than just three. So first of all, like, you know, you're going to be a lot less willing to, to buy. Cause back in the past, if you have like four good keeper options, 
you know, selling one, even if you're, you know, risky to like not make playoffs or maybe not beat the, you know, best team, even if you think you're not that likely to win it all, if you have four decent keepers, you're like, okay, I mean, I can't keep all four of them anyway, so I'll, I'll trade one off. But I think the new keeper system makes it so that, you know, teams, are not going to be thinking like that anymore. So, like, they really do have to balance, like, ah, shit, like, I don't know if my team is quite the level of, like, the top tiers. But at the same time, you know, I, I do want to get my team a little bit better and pick up keepers because, like, you know, I think people are starting to realize the optimal strategy might be, like, you know, five or six, like, pretty good keepers instead of, you know, two keepers at, like, three or four years each. Um, I just think that's where probably the meta is going, and I think that's why we've seen these kind of trades. and. I think we'll see more of them going forward, yeah. Right, right. Um yeah, I mean, I, I do think this team does make uh, great kills number two on paper. Um, but but I actually think the gap from Capital Region and great kills is close to the gap, if not bigger, uh, from great kills to maybe Oakland. A fully ho healthy Oakland, sorry. Not, not the Oakland right now, but, you know, a fully ho he healthy Oakland or, you know, you know the, the teams below like Harlem and Flushing. Like, the, the, like... I, Great kills definitely did close the gap a little bit, but you know they don't have a a Kelsey, and you know, and this we'll see in the other trades that um I think Capital Region was involved in this week. Like I, I think they, you know, they lost a little bit of the lead to 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 the this trade, and then I think they gained a lot of it back with with another trade that we're we're probably going to discuss. I mean, someone just told me on the on the Twitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hello, hello. Yeah, I think it's working now. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, anyways. Uh... Either way, I think uh, I think it's fine. Uh, hopefully, people can piece together uh, yeah, most of it. Yeah. I wonder. I mean, I think people can ask questions if if they yeah if they didn't understand what <laughs> was or where, uh... i i checked dustin's mic but not mine so that was a that was a fatal flaw fatal I flaw up, but it, yeah it was on silent and i wasn't <laughs> at, at the moment, so. but thanks thanks Nancy, for seeing that um yeah uh i think i think we'll move on i guess one last thing this is just like a really minor thing why is mike Gusecki in there I, I Hayden Hurst is on on bye week. Okay. Um, okay. We could have just picked up a tight end, but you know I, you know, save save a free agent budget. Um, Preston Williams went down, so maybe he gets a little bit bigger share. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it wasn't central to the trade. At yeah, all. yeah. I'm just it was curious. Just more of a a throw in because we needed a because our tight ends on bye. But yeah, I mean that's the biggest difference I think for me between um, Great Kills and Capital Region. Uh, you know, Kelsey stacked with Mahomes is just a huge advantage every week. Um, and, you know, relying on Hurst to, to match that is, is pretty futile. So I'm going <laughs> to need some, you know, pretty big performances everywhere else to, like, make up for that gap. And so, yeah, I, I think on paper, I, I, I would still put Capital Region a heavy favorite. Um, you know, Great Kill is probably second. And then there's a, there's a pack of teams chasing. But, um, yeah, I would say that's how the landscape of the league looks like right now. Cool. Let's go to the next trade, and we are going to talk about aforementioned Capital Region. Uh, Kamara Sutra is here. They're, they're giving up DeAndre Swift, Dallas Goddard, three fab, and a 2021 second round pick uh, to Virginia for Will Fuller, the fifth. What were your initial thoughts and uh, on this trade? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I really like it. I love to see how aggressive uh, Capital Region's been because uh, I think us and other you know people in the league have criticized them in the past for kind of being a little bit passive, you know, kind of just willing to, like, sit on what they think is, like, a pretty de decent lead. 
Um, you know, I, I said it before. I think this reopened the lead back up to pr pretty much, you know, close to how it was. Um, I mean, not before like all the trades, but like their biggest weakness weakness for me was their fourth receiver. Um, they could have just hoped that uh, Lazard comes back healthy or Preston Williams comes back healthy, and just you know hope for the best. But this is the type of aggressive move that I think wins leagues. Um, you know, they gave up. Uh, second round pick, Swift and Goddard, but I, I think overall it just makes their starting lineup so um, daunting. I mean, if you look at their full strength, like healthy starting lineup, I, there's really not a single weakness unless, you know, Tom Brady from last week is going to be Tom Brady every week. That would be probably um, the biggest concern. But yeah, I mean, you just look at his roster on paper, it, it, it's it's absolutely stacked. Yeah, I, th I think I do agree with your point. I think it's a uh, it's a really good move to to be this aggressive. But I do think this was one of the more lopsided trades um, in the in the past couple of weeks. I think you know if I was at, in Capital Region's shoes, I think just giving Swift would be enough for Will Fuller. To be honest, mm -hmm. um, I don't think you need to include all of the other pieces here. I mean, I know they're not the most amazing pieces, but you never know if Goddard's gonna be someone that can contribute or even, yeah, you know, uh, yeah. blocking if, him from... If Earth gets traded, if Earth gets traded, uh, yeah. not traded, if he doesn't re-sign or, uh, you know, if he doesn't, if he's not back with the Eagles next year, that could be a low-key, decent, um, you know, keeper piece. Um, and obviously the second round pick and, and Swift. It, it is a lot to give up. Yes, uh, I agree. I think, yeah, so I was praising more like the concept of yeah. Yeah, 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 continuing yeah. to add, even though he definitely still had the best team on paper. He, you know decided to continue to add of course i think what i think what we're seeing here is though um you know just because capital region hasn't been super active in trade discussions like in the past i think they are a little bit you know less experienced less savvy at like extracting full full um you know uh value out of some of their trade pieces and you know virginia is quite the opposite they're one of the most active uh yeah, trading teams with a ton of experience in, you know, working all types of trades, whether it's, you know, keeper trades, uh, like for like trades, position, like they're just probably, I think, one of the most skilled traders in our league. So if you do think there's like an imbalance in terms of, oh, I feel like this team could have given up less or wow, this team got a lot. I think that's what's showing here. You know, I, for it's sure. not a slight towards Capital Region, but I, 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 I don't think that they have as much trade discussion experience as as virginia and I, I think that's probably what we're seeing here yeah at least from my point of view i think um if he had taken that package and, and gone to other people i wonder if he could have gotten something similar plus more from the other side but um i'm not sure I, what the pieces might have been I, I, yeah i, I but, do i do want to yeah i do want to know if um if he was shopping that around everywhere or if you know virginia just approached him and he you know it was just a one team like discussion i, I yeah i do wonder if he was offering um, that package around because yeah. you're right. I, I do think if if you know the right team might have given up a better piece or or more for or even just you know not taking the second round pick. You know it, it's marginal, but you know you're right. Like I do think um, it's possible that they left a little bit on the table. Yeah, it, it reminds me of a trade where I made last year. I had picked up I forget the exact details, but I I gave up Chark and I got Edelman. And I had someone throw in Kenyon Drake. And I had thought that, you know, just random. It wasn't that much value at the time. It made it more difficult a little bit for Warren. And it ended up mattering a lot because Drake was actually super useful and actually turned out to be a viable keeper the next year that I turned into another keeper again, right? So, like, even though you might not think they have a lot of value at the moment, something like this could come back to bite you. And maybe you could have extracted a little bit more from the other side. It's unsure, again. And I, I like Will Fuller. I'm not trying to trash Will Fuller. He's a great player. Um, but I, I think there, a little bit more could have gotten. And who knows? Maybe even Swift could be more valuable than Will Fuller alone. But uh, it's just something that you can't predict <laughs> in the moment. Um, and it makes all these trades really, really interesting. Especially considering that Virginia is going to have a chance at the playoffs. So he could, this could even be a first round matchup, right? So it could be very interesting to see if any of these players uh, play a role in the, in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, for Virginia, it's pretty straightforward again. It's another 
type of sell move. And again, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm applauding his side for picking up all these pieces because you never know if any of these could be really, really, really important. And, and maybe Swift, uh, I know you, <laughs> from your perspective as a Lions fan, have your own yeah. judgment of Swift as a player. But for me, I think about a young running back who has been gaining more of a role on his team and he has talent. And so when you think about it just like that, removing the team, then it yeah, could be a no, very I, valuable piece down, I, down the road. I actually like Swift a lot long term. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming that Patricia will be gone and, you know, Lions could easily hire another bad coach. You know, it's, it's in their DNA. But mm -hmm. <laughs> if you assume that... If you assume that they get like an average coach or, you know, maybe even a good coach, you know, I really, really love Swift's uh, talent. I, I think the Lions actually have pretty good uh, offensive line. Um, I think that offense could be really good if, you know, the right decision makers are behind it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not down on Swift's talent at all. I, I actually liked him like third or fourth best out of, you know, all the rookie running backs this year yeah. um, coming into the season. It, it, it was just more a, you know, me not believing in his value this year to be that steady just just because of coach not not because of talent i mean adrian peterson shouldn't be getting carries over him <laughs> regardless of what you know what situation the team's in but the team is not going anywhere like as is like it, it should be see what you got with swift you know stop taking him out for you know stuff that he could learn uh, it's just it was yeah so i actually agree with you like you know long term piece wise i actually think swift is a lot more valuable than what I would value him just for this year. So, yeah, I mean, I, I have to say, Virginia's made good trades all year. I think, I think I've pretty much loved the, the reasoning and you know the thinking behind every single trade of theirs. And it, you know, if if I had to you know crown somebody as having made like the best trades this year, I I think Virginia you know consistently wowed me all year. So, I I know, I know the results haven't gone you know as great as you know. You know, maybe we were talking up, or maybe how uh, Virginia Virginia might have hoped for, but I, I really, you know, am not lying when I say like, I, I I've been impressed with so many of these trades this year. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, if you were to think about Will Fuller uh, getting a keeper package, I don't think I would have put it something like this. You know, like I, yeah. no offense to Will Fuller again. I, he's he's a good. His stats have been really good. I think he's top fifteen wide receiver or something. So he's very, very good this year. But at the same time, it is Will Fuller. He, he can get hurt any moment. Uh, not yeah, a question about his streaky, talent. Yeah, yeah any streaky. streaky it's just it, yeah. Virginia's killing it with the trades. And uh, it's just really unfortunate, the, the Delvin Cook trade. Um, yeah. We can take a look uh, at the trade after two weeks. Everyone liked the trade for Virginia. Uh, everyone liked the trade for both sides. But uh, it's been really unfortunate for Virginia to lose someone that had a streak like that and uh, could have easily put him at a prime position for playoffs, but now yeah. he's at four and five. Like Gall Galladay got hurt, you know. That yeah, really exactly. Yeah, like um, the week after Galladay gets hurt, he loses Kittle as well. It's been a yeah, rough couple it, weeks. Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, but if I if I had to you know rank trading acumen of all, all the teams, I, the, the real trading enterprise for me is in, in Virginia, not not on Mars. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, interesting. Um, yeah, I guess with this trade, do you think Capital Region is? I guess you already answered it before, but <laughs> you can you can kind of talk about it again uh, because people didn't hear my question the first time. But are they far and away the best team in the HFFL yeah, right now? I, I mean, yeah. I just looking at their roster. I mean, I, I legit do not see any weaknesses. Um, Mahomes and Tom Brady, you know, very, very good. Uh, Kamara, Miles Sanders, Dalvin Cook. I mean, those that's two top five running backs and probably, you know, a top 10 or top 12 or, you know, something like that. And then the receivers are, you know, really, really good too. Like, Robbie Anderson's been doing it all year. Stephon Diggs is... I, the one thing is if Josh Allen has some bad weeks again and, you mm -hmm. know, Stephon Diggs dips, yep. I guess that could be a concern. But, you know, Lockett is... You know, killing it, Will Fuller. So, I mean, I, I, their each of their units is close to the best in the league. I, I think I've said this before. Um, their one maybe weak spot is is wide receiver in terms of top top talent. It might get beat out by you know a team or two, but I mean the running backs clearly top. Quarterback either you know tops or second. 
it's really they just have to stop picking defenses that give them negative you know, <laughs> negative six negative seven but yeah I, I would i would say these are pretty clear favorites um although the, the gap did get closed a little bit between um this trade and and the other trade sure sure I will say just one comment there that no matter how good the team looks on paper, I think there are still a lot of names that are going to play a factor uh, in those really important weeks, the weeks of the playoffs. Um, and I just think about even last year, uh, my team was very, very talented. I knew that, of course, but I still had to play the game and pick up the Moster, pick up the Higby, have the Drake, pick up DeAndre Washington, have Perriman. All those names were on my starting lineup to help me win. So even if it looks really, really good right now, you still need to continue playing. And I think that's a 100%, message 100%. message for Ken, of course, to keep improving your team and also a message to everyone else who's going to be I, in the playoffs. I agree. I agree 100%. I, dude, fantasy football is too unpredictable. For, <laughs> Way too unpredictable. For, yeah, for you to really crown a champion like you know this early. It's exactly. Just, it's just silly. It's just we're just talking about on paper, obviously, yep. but yep. paper makes up very little of what actually happens. We, I mean, we see it every week where, you know, a team that you wouldn't expect wins the Hamilton, right? It's not like the same team wins the Hamilton every week. You right, know? So right. If, if, you know, you could you could be the one that locks into the Hamilton on the given week, and then, you know, that's that's just how playoffs go. So Exactly. Yeah, I, I would say for any team that's chasing, like, I, it does look like the gap is pretty big between, you know, it does. number one and number <laughs> three or number yeah. four. We see it too. But, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. But at best, it, you know, that, that only gives you a slight, like, not a slight, but it, it, the, the advantage that having a better team on paper gives you in any given week, it's it's not as big as you think. So Right, 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 right. So And, and also, it's a message for Ken, too. Even though you think you have the lead, you have to make sure you secure it if you really want to, yeah, to finish dude, it. I, so there's, there's just so many things that could happen, yeah. Exactly. All right, so let's go to the next trade here. And I, I've ordered these trades in, in terms of kind of like in importance, but uh, maybe some people might disagree. Obviously, if you made the trade, you might think they're more important to you. Uh, but in any case, I think in terms of the overall landscape of the league, I kind of ordered them. And the next one here is LIC uh, with Oakland. LIC giving up Wayne Gallman and Drew Brees for uh, Matthew Stafford, David Singletary, and a 2021 first-round swap priority. And this is with Oakland again. Uh, just to clarify, so I guess let's start with the Oakland side. Um, you know, in terms of what they're giving up and what they're getting, how do you think they fared for this trade? Um, I, <laughs> this trade was kind of weird. Um, I I don't think a lot changed for either side really. Um, first of all, the first round swap priority it would only come into effect if I guess Oakland misses playoffs right mm -hmm. which i'm thinking is pretty unlikely or if you know lic somehow wants to swap even into a lower spot which is i guess a possibility too um so that part was very of uh, very little importance to me and then drew Brees versus stafford um, i don't know like for me i i kind of view them like similarly enough where i'm not saying it's like it, like I, I don't even know who. Uh, like it really depends on matchups. Maybe, yeah. Maybe the matchups clear it up. Yeah. Um. But for me, they're pretty similar assets. And then Singletary for Gallman. I guess I would rather have Singletary. But I mean, Zach Moss seems to be emerging. Like, and I I don't think either of those guys should be starting for a playoff team. So to me, it it's just depth for depth. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I don't know. This trade was really weird for me to unpack. I I, I wasn't sure exactly what the end goal was. I, I guess. Uh, Oakland was feeling frustrated with um, Stafford because uh, you know injury and like you know he's kind of been um, a little bit up and down and his weapons are either like broken or you know struggling sometimes. So I guess he if he feels like Drew Brees is like you know a significant upgrade, that's that's probably pretty fair because uh, Drew Brees has looked a lot better recently and yeah. he probably does have some um, pretty good matchups coming if I if I know what uh, Oakland's you know, MO is. Yeah, um, I'm. But yeah, I, yeah, it, it was it was kind of confusing to me. Yeah, I think I'm just as confused, honestly, when I take a look at it, take a step back, and think about it. I I think it does have to do with the fact uh, that Matthew Stafford has been very disappointing uh, recently, mm -hmm. yeah. and maybe it's this is a slight improvement with Drew Brees. Maybe maybe that's how Oakland is thinking about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. With that's Michael right. Thomas back, and it it did look like the Saints' offense was finally clicking with all of the weapons they have. Sanders now they got. 
um, yeah, there's just so many uh, players there now. Um, I, I, I can see why, uh, you know, you would think Breeze is on a huge upward trend. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and maybe um, <laughs> on the other end, Stafford is also going kind of on a downward trend. He, he did look pretty frustrating. Um, I, I think it was even against a pretty bad defense. I can't remember who they just played. But in any case, um, it's been very disappointing for him. Uh, putting Stafford in the lineup and may have even cost them a win. And this could be kind of like a tilt trade to get him off the roster, get a different QB, breathe some fresh air. Uh, Wayne Gallman, maybe that's a little bit of a homer type of, you know, pick up the Giants player. He did look pretty good. Uh, He's put up more points than uh, Singletary like last two or three weeks. So Right, right. So yeah, I, yeah. Could, be, could be an improvement even over Singletary. Uh, but it's... Not yeah, Gall, uh, Gallman 13.9, yep. 13.45, 15.45. So he's averaged, you know, Not around bad. 14 to, to 15 points a game over the last three weeks. And Singletary looks to be, you know, losing a little bit of his, his uh, share with, uh, you know, Moss. And, you know, he's been a little bit up and down. So I, I actually do think this uh, upgrades um, Oakland's starting lineup in a very marginal way. But, like, you know, each of those guys are like the same tier, but I guess slight upgrades within the tier. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah th it's such a weird trade to evaluate because, because they, it, it's such a marginal upgrade. But I right. do think it is, it is a clear, um, upgrade, even if the the type, you know, the upgrades are very small. Yeah, end of the day, it it's not a trade of really high importance. This is kind of why it's kind of it's followed the other bigger trades. Um, I I did think it was interesting though, uh, in terms of, uh, LIC, and we'll get to Oakland later because they have one more trade. Yeah. But in terms of LIC, um, ah, man, they also have another trade. Maybe we can revisit them after that trade. Yeah, let's go revisit them after that trade. Let's just move on to the next trade here. Oakland Pooper Troopers, they send David Montgomery and Calvin Ridley uh, to Virginia for Marquise Hollywood Brown and Raheem Mostert. This one was a real interesting one. Uh, yeah, and it, I thought this one was bigger than the one previous. Uh, I thought you would order them differently. Yeah, maybe I, maybe I, I misordered. It wasn't, it wasn't a strict ordering, maybe. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also had to take into account a little bit of chronological order just to oh, like right, uh, right. make things make sense. But uh, still, uh, yeah, this definitely is more important, I think. Uh, who do you think ended up winning the trade? I'm curious to your thoughts on that. Uh, so I think it comes down to what you think of Marquise Brown next year and Calvin Ridley next year. Um, if Ridley can be tagged, I think this is a pretty, you know, big win for... Does Ridley have any years left? He has no years left, and his franchise tag would be for 62. Okay. All right. I mean, I still like him in Virginia. I think Calvin Ridley, uh, when he's healthy, you know, could be top you know, five wide receiver in fantasy. Mm -hmm. And Marquise Brown, I mean, I, I love Hollywood Brown talent-wise more than probably a lot of people. Uh, but, you know, that offense just hasn't been clicking the way it, it, it can. So right, right. It, it's really hard to just be like, oh, yeah, like Marquise Brown is going to be, you know, a totally different guy in the second half when we haven't seen it in the first half. So for me, I, I actually think this is like a pretty big downgrade for um, Oakland in terms of like current year uh, production which is why I was pretty confused but I I don't oh. know I, this was also a very these like last three trades were all very very confusing as <laughs> um, you know people were thinking because I you know I don't know if Oakland views Marquise Brown as like a really good keeper or you know I because like so many people have different views on a lot of these guys especially with you know how keeper raises happen like a lot of people I think are going to be like okay like marquise brown uh at a nine dollar raise 20 bucks like might not even like think that's a huge like value and then yeah. some people might because like marquise brown to how we've performed this year i don't think would be a huge value at like that price you know um but you know if you believe in the talent and you think like oh i like next year they're gonna be so much better like the passing is gonna click then i mean you know someone could value him at at much higher than that so like it's so hard to like know what each side thinking in terms of like keepers more than ever i think in the past like you know you know like the cheap guys are only going to get like a three dollar four dollar raise so you're like that's still that's still easily yeah might as well but, yeah right but yeah so i i'm curious as to what you think I, would you think marquise brown is 
a guy that you would you know be excited to keep next year? Because I, I know you have a lot of involvement in you know the Baltimore offense. So would you pay <sighs> if he was on the open market next year? Like, would you be willing to go much higher than twenty, or you know not much higher than twenty, or you know, yeah? Because as of right yeah, now, it's just all really confusing. Yeah, I think it's about twenty. Although, so for right. me personally, it's hard for me to take on Hollywood Brown because I have Lamar and J.K. Dobbins. Right, right. <laughs> just I'm speaking my... more generally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Okay. <laughs> but so if I were to, the yeah, exactly. Team and you had the option to have, uh, you know, twenty dollar Marquise Brown as a as a keeper. Like, it's not terrible. That, yeah, it's not terrible. Is I think I would take it. Yeah. Depends. But, but that's currently, and we don't know how he'll finish the season. And I think right, that's right. kind of where I'm headed towards. I'm actually thinking more about this trade in this season. Both of these teams are, again, playoff hopefuls. I think Oakland has already secured a spot. Virginia has a good chance, although they haven't you know, completely secured it uh, yet. But I think if you think about these players in terms of this year only, Virginia is making a bet that Ridley will be really, really good and may- maybe be useful for that franchise tag. Whereas Oakland, I think he's already starting to think about the playoffs and those matchups. And let me just tell you, for the Ravens, they face the uh, the Browns, Jaguars, Giants in the playoffs, I believe. And so with those matchups, maybe Hollywood, Hollywood Brown is right. going to be very, very valuable for Oakland specifically. Yeah. And then Mostert is coming back slowly, but he's coming back. And maybe San Francisco will use Mostert back in his old work uh, horse role and uh, be very, very useful for Oakland down the stretch. Yeah, no, I, I think maybe that sums up pretty much all their trades that they've made. Um, I, they clearly do have an eye towards, uh, you know, playoff weeks. And I, I'm sure they have a, you know, a bookmark of what, what playoff matchups each, yeah, 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 yeah. Player and each, team has. Each and I, team, I think yeah. that probably sums up everything. Because, um, uh, you know, a lot of these trades might be confusing to us because we're not necessarily in that mode of just looking strictly for weeks, you know, 14, 15, 16. Right. But, you know, it, like you said, like Marquise Brown seems to have a really good slate. And then Mostert, once he gets healthy, is, you know, undeniably an upgrade over David Montgomery. Montgomery. Yep. If you're thinking along those lines, I, I do think um, – I could see how, you know, this trade helps out Oakland a lot. But, you know, in terms of keeper value, like, as of what we know right now, um, you know, Marquise Brown, unfortunately, has been the 45th uh, wide receiver in, in total scoring this season so far. Mm-hmm. So, I, like, you know, it, it, it ha- it's been pretty rough. I probably wouldn't value him as a huge keeper at 20. But I do think, um, you know, Oakland is more thinking of, you know, even beyond the keeper value, I think they're thinking of, yeah, like I, I want the guy with the easy, easy matchups, uh, weeks fourteen to fifteen, and you know if he finishes, uh, if he finishes the season strong, obviously his numbers are gonna look a lot better, and you know he's gonna have much more keeper value. So, I think that probably, yeah, that probably explains everything. Um, we're just too small brain to to be looking <laughs> <laughs> that far ahead, but you know, I, I, it really seems like that's the type of trade that Oakland's been looking for the last couple of weeks, and I, I think maybe all of their trades have had a little bit of that in, in them. Yeah, to me, I think this is, to me at least, it's a clear win for Oakland. But uh, just because of the implications that it has for this year. Um, we're going to have to see how Calvin Ridley does. Because if he is amazing down down these last couple of weeks, and he is really good for that franchise tag, then maybe it's a little bit more valuable. But I believe Virginia already has a couple tag candidates. Uh, that's true. Derek, yeah, Henry, Derek Henry I think that and Dak. Tag. I right. think I don't, maybe maybe a couple, but in, in any case, it's going to be difficult for Ridley to get into that conversation, yeah. I believe. Uh, but it's going to be this is going to be a really interesting trade when we look after the playoffs have been finished. How did these four players do? Did they help these teams in those weeks like they yeah. thought they would? So we'll yeah. we'll see. I mean, I, that's my favorite phrase, but uh, we'll have to see if they yeah. if these uh, players are going to be very important. I feel like they will. It always ends yeah. up that way. <clears throat> yeah. I, I like yep. it for Virginia. You like it for Oakland. So yep. I guess we'll play, play here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's go to the last trade here. And so we didn't cover all the trades. Uh, we can't because of time. Um, and some of them are kind of trash for trash anyways, uh, which is uh, <laughs> Diaz's favorite uh, phrase for categorizing those, those, uh, those trades. But this last one, uh, we had a little bit of a blow up in the Discord last night, but... We'll say it again here with LIC sending Matthew Stafford and Mike Williams to Mars for Marcus Johnson, Ben Roethlisberger, and the 2021 second round pick. So uh, I'll let you take the floor. 
Dustin, go ahead. I, has a team that's, you know, been in ninth or 10th place at this point in the season um, ever not had control of their first round pick, second round pick, and third round pick? I, I, I know most third round picks aren't worth <laughs> it, but I feel like 3.1 or 3.2 could have a little bit of value that you shouldn't just throw away. But it, it's mind boggling that, you know, this team doesn't have any of their picks going into a season that was so bad all year like it wasn't it wasn't like a surprise that they fell off a cliff like they should have seen this coming for quite a while pretty much when McCaffrey went down and they traded him like it was pretty clear like you know it, it wasn't going to be a playoff season so like for them to actually go the opposite way and trade away because this isn't the only second round pick they've traded away this uh they had the Virginia one for a little bit and they traded that one away oh wow so, it's just mind-boggling that this team is going to go into next rookie draft with, you know, probably Harlem's first-round pick and nothing else. Like, wow. You know, that's – that's and I – so – Harlem's first-round pick. Oh. Yeah, I think this upcoming draft has a, a decent amount of talent that I would have loved to play in, like, the second round and stuff too. So to just give that away just because, you know, maybe, you know, they're not confident in who, who they pick, it's, it's so crazy. And for Mike Williams, who, you know – does make the flashy catches but you know he always gets hurt he's ranked um 47 in wide receiver scoring among you know amongst wide receivers this year um even if you go by average he's still you know not top 30 so i don't understand why you would do this for for mike williams like i maybe i'm you know underselling mike williams but i really do think um even if you do think mike williams is gonna you know break out and have a really strong year next year you could probably get him for not much more expensive than I think, um, you know, what whatever he's able to be kept for. So that that's that's my concern. Like if you, <laughs> I, I just don't see it being worth it because like the the early picks in the second round have been some really really good players lately. Um, I got Antonio Gibson. Um, obviously, uh, LIC got Justin Jefferson, and you know previous years there have been other really really good players taken there. I just think, arguably, like your, your early pick in the second round is more valuable than a lot of picks in the first round, just because you're getting them, you know, at such a cheap price, and you get the first pick of you know whatever's left there. That I, you know, I, I just don't understand what what Mars is doing here. Yeah, I am just like just like these both of these teams, right? We're kind of the three teams that are not really having an interest in the playoffs. We're kind of already thinking about 2021, right? And so I've kind of already thought about, you know, what might the rookie draft look like? Mm -hmm. What might be in the second round? And it's just mind-boggling, again, as you said, mind-boggling yeah. that you uh, would send someone, uh, man, the, that top pick in the second round. Uh, it might not be one. It could be two or three. But I would project a lot of very exciting players, very exciting young players that Mars might want to have for next year and even for the future um it's just kind of mind-boggling crazy and he's playing this in hard mode i don't know why you would do that uh if yeah. you if you saw if I, if someone told me that these four players are traded i would have actually thought that second round pick would have come from lic because yeah, for me yeah. i don't think mike williams is that good either i agree with you i think that the that contract was actually um a bad one that it would yeah, be no, I, taking I up agree. a year I, yeah, I, I've been, <laughs> it doesn't I'm make like, any I'm sense. Kind of, and I'm kind of making fun of that deal because like it's taking up a keeper year, and yeah. I think it's you know giving you value. He hasn't been worth it for you know, you know whatever he cost this year because he's like outside the top forty in scoring, like very inconsistent, gets hurt often, and you know it, it just doesn't make sense. I I just feel like if anything, the pick should come from the other side, but yeah. certainly not a second round pick should be you know leaving um, in this trade. So I. Yeah, you know, Mars calls themselves the trading enterprise, but really, what they're more of a charity, I think. They oh give my away, god! They give away pieces. <laughs> so maybe they should change their name to the Mars uh, <sighs> Trade Charity or Player Charity, because maybe Pick Charity, because they give give them away so easily. The, the other yeah, thing I mean, is Stafford I'm, I'm and Roethlisberger. I would have yeah. thought Roethlisberger was more valuable than Stafford. Like I don't, I don't get this at all. It's just so, I just. I mean, yeah, I don't know. After we trash Mike Williams, maybe he becomes something, but it just is like, 
been a long time and he still hasn't shown much and he as you said he always gets hurt so it's it's really bad i think it's really really bad <laughs> i mean yeah you have to look at you know where his rank is right now and like how he's performed and like you know unless something drastically changes in the next seven or eight games if he were a free agent if he were you know just on the auction market he would probably go around whatever he's being kept for probably less honestly but like, yeah you know if you look at how many values there were at that price point like in the in the auction draft this past year i just don't see it being even worth you know taking up a keeper slot you know like because you know they're limited and i would rather just you know give another year to to debo samuel no not debo samuel uh <laughs> another year to like cd lamb and you know cheapen his like price year to year than you know spend a year on on mike williams so you know i mean if he got it for free you know like I'd be like, okay, you're taking you're taking a chance on that, but I am curious. I I I do wonder how many teams would have viewed Mike Williams as a positive asset, you know, with a, a guaranteed year next year, like still on his contract, and how many would have considered that as you know something that they would not want to take on? Because hmm. you know, judging by his performance so far this year, and you know, it, it, the, the numbers just say like it, it it he shouldn't be considered you know someone that you're excited to keep. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, up, to give up a valuable two point one, I, I, I also wonder if, could he have shopped it for something you know more useful this year or even a better keeper? Because I, you know, hmm. when I saw that trade, I was like, damn, I, I certainly would have offered something pretty good for what looks like you know two point one, two point two, you know, maybe two point three. So I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I think um, Mars has been on tilt for a pretty long time now, and I'm wondering if we could even call it tilt still because like. It just seems consistently like his his valuation of players and picks and assets is so different from what I think a lot of people, you know, think, you know, and he, he doesn't really seem to be, you know, adjusting to, to change it. And he just seems to be doubling down every week. So I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe you know, will look really stupid when Mike Williams is, you know, the 15th best receiver next year or 10th best receiver next year. But for me, I, I didn't see what, what the, the rationale behind this trade for Mars was. Last thing before we move on is the Marcus Johnson, you know, that aspect of the trade. You know, if you think about what he could be, and we don't know what he could be. It could be even much more <laughs> better than Mike Williams. Yeah, like, he's this, cheap. It's just, he's cheap. I just feel like he lost on every aspect of the trade. It, it's, <laughs> it's kind of funny, kind of infuriating. It's a little bit of everything, but yeah. honestly, I mean, you know, you know that feeling you get when, when you trade and you're like, "Damn, I wish he came to me with like." Yeah, I wish that. he came like, to me. I want that yeah, second round pick. I, 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 as soon as I saw uh, like, that second round pick, I was like, "I would have given up something for that, like something be probably better than, you know, what Mike Williams has done this year." So LSC might get two back to back or something, a, a high yeah, second yeah. round. And That's dude, crazy. Got Justin Jefferson this year. Um, I, they're really good at picking in that range, so you know I, I would be very, very afraid of what they could do with that pick. So I just want to wrap up the trade deadline a bit. If you were to let's say rank the contending teams and how they did uh, in terms of improving their teams, which which team really stood out to you the most? Uh, I, if you want, I can start because uh, I think you were one of the teams. And yeah, you can go. You can go first. I, I would say it really was Ken. I mean, if you. Take it even a step back in a couple of weeks before the Delvin Cook trade <laughs> has just looked so good. Immediately paid dividends. Looks like he's going to be amazing. Amazing for Ken down the stretch. Uh, I think to me, he's the clear winner. Uh, he didn't need it necessarily, but it really uh, provided the biggest gap from him and the rest of the teams uh, in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to agree. Like, I, I would argue that he did need it, though. Um... Okay. Because you know he he does he is in a really good position where you know he still has Mahomes and Kamara and while they're still probably on his team for you know a couple more years, but injuries could like you know derail any type of season like like it did last year, uh, where Mahomes got hurt, Kamara was banged up. So I, I think he really did have to go for it. I I think he did need to go for it, and um, I you know I the Cooks trade obviously tilted the balance of the whole league it did. very heavily in his favor. It did. Um. So, yeah, I don't think how anyone else could say, uh, you know, adding Cook and, uh, you know, even even Fuller, who, you know, you're, you're saying isn't quite a top-tier player, but 
just to shore up every every like hole on his roster, I think you know I, I think it was all worth it for him, and he, he's improved his team a ton. So, uh, you know, I I really do think this you know his trade de deadline performance was was the best in the league. Um, if I if I do want to nitpick, I do wonder if he could have you know got involved in some trades for uh, a DST that you know maybe. <laughs> <laughs> more steady because i you know playing matchups is fine too uh but with the assets he had i, I do wonder if he could have gone to uh, a different team and you know gotten a better defense too um what you were saying with the fuller trade i i do wonder um there are some targets that i would see that maybe he could have gone with the same package and gotten something similar like yonkers has pittsburgh defense and some really good wide receivers i i do wonder if mm. he even like you know approached him yeah approached him yeah because yeah. you know like you like you're saying that package was a bit of overpay i think for what what will fuller is and i do wonder if you know he could have gone somewhere else and gotten a defense plus a wide receiver of that you know talent or if not better you know so that really is probably the one question um i would have on you know how his trade deadline played out but you know really hard to to knock anything he's done and uh obviously i think great kills also improved a lot um they did consolidate their depth um it's still i don't think you know the tops in the league but you know that that more is a function of capital region going out and also making trades if capital region st stood pat i actually think great kills might be the best team on paper but you know uh they didn't stand pat so i you know i have to give them you know first place in in the trade deadline uh you know performance review yeah i mean i think they they made their team so much better it's just crazy what delvin cook does for that team i mean you mentioned kelsey and mahomes but they also have kamara they also have the, the they picked up robbie anderson they have Lockett in their flex like it's just been crazy just been crazy for what they have um in terms of losers for the deadline I don't think we need to cover it because I think we we've made it clear who <laughs> we think it is. <laughs> but um, let's take about let's think about it from like the the other aspect of like uh, the sellers. Sorry, the buyers. Wait, no, the sellers. The who who did who do you think did the best job selling? Got themselves a good future to to, to bang upon. I, I think there were a lot of teams that did it well. But if you were to to choose one or maybe two that stood out to you. Yeah, um, I mean, I still, I'm still a huge believer in what Virginia did, um, <laughs> even if it didn't play out for this year. Mm -hmm. I think Herbert has, you know, more and more solidified that he is going to be a, a huge value at whatever you know he can be kept at. You know, Galladay being hurt sucks, but obviously, you know, when healthy and under contract, like Galladay would be a huge, huge value at. Um, how much is he? He's at you know 26 for yeah. next year. So yeah. I mean, that's an easy, easy value. Um, so I, I do think they did get the most bang for, for their buck. Even, you know, even guys like uh, Swift, the picks, like I, I just think they gained so much future value um, that we said there's no lose situation because if, if what happened happened, they're still so well set up for next year that you can just write all of this off as, okay, I just sold at the deadline. That's it. Like if you miss playoffs, you know, that's, yeah. that's fine. Cause True. You, you, you're so set up for next year. True. So I think Virginia is like, by clear um clearly my favorite for uh who sold the best okay um i have a question for you yeah yonkers didn't really end up doing anything in either direction right yep um what did you think of that did you think that they should have gone in one direction or the other or you know are they in a situation where you were just like i guess standing pat is like the best because i i was very curious as to what he, he would do because they did lose a huge matchup in week nine uh right before the deadline um, but their team is still very good on paper, so you know it's not a team that I would give up on. So I, I do wonder if um, you know they were thinking of either selling or buying, because uh, like you can go in either direction with the team, and it would be completely justified. But um, they did pretty much nothing, so I, I'm wondering what you think of that. Yeah, before I I will answer that question, but before I get there, I do want to say that LIC really stood out for me because one of the things that they did was they have all the good players. What they need is years. And they got rid of that and got yeah. a second round pick. It's just yeah, insane yeah. how good I mean, yeah. that singular was for. Trade wise, singular <laughs> trade wise, I, I do think that one is like the least downside of all of them. Because, like, the, the Virginia trades, the downsides of those were, you know, giving capital reasons. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, to, right, to, right, right. To wipe out, you know, everyone. Any chance yeah. Virginia had. And, 
you know, it it low it, it lowered their chances of winning like this year. But for for LIC, I I don't think they lost on any singular aspect of that trade. Yeah, so. he he just needed years. I mean, he already has the players. He's already got Justin Jefferson. He's got Tua. Um, and he's got Aaron Jones. Like you don't need that many more. Um, but to get rid of the Williams contract and get a draft asset, uh, and potentially, you know, he's got a swap priority now from Oakland. Like whatever that trade was i don't know exactly what was going on but still he's got a lot more assets now to work with it's going to be uh it, it's just it's amazing it's, it's a testament to how good he is uh even on this t- side uh, of the of the buy sell market uh back to yonkers so i think um my take is that he holds a lot of he puts a lot of value i think in the consolation bracket and winning that consolation bracket. Mm-hmm. And currently he's projected probably to be the favorite of it. Um, he's mm-hmm. likely not going to make the playoffs. And maybe there's going to be one more team that joins him that loses out of the playoff spot. Oh, it's probably two with, uh, so there's one spot between Flushing, um, Harlem and Virginia. And even still, I would say that Yonkers is probably the favorite, at least to me. But, uh, yeah, I don't think he needed to improve himself anymore in terms of winning that bracket, that tournament. Um, and I think he really, really does uh, think that that's going to help him a lot for the next year, which I think you know a lot of teams have already shown having that advantage is massive in the, in the year. And it does actually count as an extra keeper. And, and uh, uh, it's just, yeah, it's just so, just too good. And I think he also already has a whole bunch of um, good keepers. They're not great. Uh, they're not top of the league great, but uh, good enough, I would say, with Saquon. And he's got Connor for really cheap. So um, he's still set up, but maybe he could have improved a little bit on the edges with a couple receivers here or there. I'm not sure. Yeah, I just thought it was curious to, to kind of compare what um, Harlem and Yonkers did uh, after their their matchup. Uh, mm. Yonkers lost and then kind of just seemed to you know, be okay with, like, running with their team. Probably for the reasons you said, um, Constellation Bracket, I think, is a fundamental, you know, priority for for the philosophy that um, JJ runs. So I, I do agree that's probably what they were thinking. And then, you know, Harlem, they won, but they kind of did, you know, a half-sell move, a half-buy move. Right, right. Which, um, you know, it, it was just really interesting to contrast their uh, two uh, philosophies because, at, after the week nine matchup, maybe you would expect something different, or maybe something you know, you know, different than what happened. But yeah, that was very, very interesting. I thought. Yeah, and who, who knows? So I think Harlem is thinking, you know, why even try if you're going to lose to Ken anyways? If you're going to lose the great kills anyways, why even try? Uh, whereas on the flip side, Yonkers is saying, I'm going to try and win this consolation bracket. And it's really funny. I think. It would have been the exact same, even if the 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 uh, the result had flipped, where Yonkers had in a won. Way, in a way, yeah, I do think that would have been the same. <laughs> yeah, it would have been. I think they would have treated the deadline the exact same way, and they already had their plans in motion from a while ago. Uh, it's just funny, and I think it's kind of the thought that everyone had once that Dalvin Cook trade had happened. Then it's kind of like, oh, what am I going to do? Am I going to be? Uh, trying to vie for that championship this year and spent everything for it? Or am I going to go in the other direction? Just, you know, punt. Just say, Ken, okay, that was a great trade, great move, uh, great set of moves that you've done in the previous set of years to make your team this good uh, for 2020. Hats off to you. I'll look to next year. So I think that's just kind of what they've already been thinking and they've continued to, to show that into the deadline um, this year. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um. The one team that I want to cover also is Flushing. They also yeah. didn't do anything. So what do you yeah. think about that in terms of um, they aren't definite for the for the playoffs. Um, they also have a chance at the uh, uh, consolation bracket, of course, if they miss it. Um, and it's been a rising story for them as they've had, I think, four games in a row that they've won. Um, yep, and so yep. it's <laughs> it's kind of interesting to see, you know, they do potentially have a couple keeper pieces so they're set up for the future but do you think they're treating this maybe as like a stepping stone year maybe they're thinking next year is the true year or do you think uh you know they're actually just looking at the consolation bracket what do you think is going on in flushing yeah i mean you know uh, you know john has famously given um you know ken a little bit of you know stick for 
being a little conservative and like not really being too aggressive. But uh-huh, I think uh-huh. flushing is kind of kind of similar in the trade market. Yeah. Um, they really just take trades that you know come to them more than they uh, you know try to seek out opportunities to improve their team as much. I think. Right. Right. Um, and they'll put out fires where fires appear, but they won't preemptively be like, okay, like you know, I want to get ahead of this or I want to you know you know try to try to change this part of my team. So you know. I think that's probably more what was at play here, more than a you know philosophical thinking of you know this is a stepping stone year or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. they're just more co- content to let chips fall where they do, and you know okay. if, if they if they win it all, they win it all. If they not, then you know they just want to you know keep the core. You know the guys, yeah, keep yeah. the core that they believe in. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I I don't think like making zero trades is really you know, ever that good going into a trade deadline, I would have liked to see them at least improve their teams on the margins. Um, kind of do, you know, trades that, that, you know, someone like Oakland did. I mean, obviously at five and four, he's far from a lock from making playoffs, but, um, so it wouldn't be the same type of trades, but at least like try to like move around some pieces and maybe, you know, fix a weakness somewhere or, or not. But, you know, they obviously didn't. Um, so, you know, I, I do question that a bit. I do, yeah. Yeah, I'm on the same boat as you. I do question it. I think, you know, as I've mentioned, they are a rising story. They should be feeling good about themselves. But mm-hmm. you can make that story even better if you improve your team a little bit more. Um, there are some performances that you know they're not going to last into the into the, the later half of the season when you got Adrian Peterson on your team. You've got a Jordan Howard on your team that you're starting. You, you can't rely on those players week in, week yeah, out. So yeah, yeah. you you got to think about making a little bit of improvements um maybe there weren't trades out there for them but at the same time you've got to try and explore and see if there are right so i wouldn't yeah i wouldn't have maybe you know committed like oh i'm gonna try to give up my best best keepers to try to get better because i I do right right you know the gap does look very large and it does i don't think you know teams at this position should be pushing that hard in um but at the same time you know maybe try to trade you know one piece for two pieces that covers a weakness or you know the other way around or you know something that where you know you can see this team being better at the right moment you know better at the moments that you might need it to be and i I, you know i just feel like doing nothing kind of just left it at this position where you know they are five and four but I, i don't think their roster is you know super strong on paper so you know they're kind of just just there which you know I think should be criticized that you know especially because like everyone is so involved and aggressive in this league that I, I don't know if this type of mentality is really the best way to you know win a championship in, in the hfl yep it's a good summary there and i think the last team that we haven't covered at all haven't mentioned uh it's because the new england kingfishers they did a lot of work way back when and they did nothing at the deadline as well i guess more recently they haven't done anything um uh I'll just start for from my point of view. I think uh, a lot of the, I did make a lot of moves from the past, and I think they mm-hmm. ended up benefiting me quite a bit. Actually, I, I'm pretty surprised. Um, uh, at least for now. I mean, I can't say you know how it will be at the end of the season, but for now, I mean, somehow I got Jerry Judy. Somehow, I really uh, like the Judy trade. Somehow, like it's just crazy. I I have Moss now, who's on an upward trend as well, and you know I did have to give up players for that. That is true, but. My season was going to, uh, you know, terrible end. <laughs> not not a good end uh, in terms of making the playoffs and competing for a championship. And so it was already focusing 2021. I already had, you know, a couple of moves that kind of hinted at that, even from earlier in the season, picking up Dobbins and trading for Chark. It was more about the next year rather than this year because I, in the back of my mind, I knew the, the window was closing. And so uh, it was... In a way, getting those moves done early, I think, helped me a lot, uh, the timing of it. But that's my take on it. Obviously, I'm optimistic and, you know, excited by these young players and just redoing my whole roster so that it's a lot of, uh, you know, up-and-coming youth. Yeah, no, this, this is, I think, a transition year. Like, it, it, yeah. you can call it rebuilding, but it's really kind of like, you know, sorting through the remnants of your championship year. Um, and bridging it to, to what you know should be the, the next core of your team. Um, obviously, you would hope for your window to have lasted like 
maybe one more year. Yeah. And I think I was I was very firmly expecting it to last at least one more year. But um so did I. HFL, like Windows Windows can shut real quick. Like you you never know how the fortunes of, of your players can turn and obviously injuries and stuff can make it like so that's what I'm saying with Capital Region. It seems like, oh, they have, you know, two or three more years of Mahomes and Kamara, like they don't need to rush. But at the same yeah, time good you point. kinda do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, you know, Kamara gets hurt and misses a whole year and then all of a sudden you're like, Oh, this is kind of another lost year and then the closer and closer you get to the e- end of that you're going to regret not having pushed uh, harder in the years that they were healthy and, you know, balling out, you know? So, you know, in, in that sense, I, I really do think capital region has played it correctly. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The aggression is really good to see. Yep. And for new England, it, it is a transition year, maybe a year earlier than you think, but I do think you, you handled it well. Um, you know, you did set yourself up with some, some really good pieces for the future and got rid of, maybe not got rid of but like you know moved some of the pieces that weren't going to help you out too much this year um with how your season was turning out so you know aj brown really good trade um for you know michael thomas that wasn't going to really save your season um same with jerry judy i i thought that was a a really good get for i think andrews right yep yeah you know mark andrews um you know don't see him being a part of you know your keeping keeper future going forward unfortunately so right. you know, to get to get a talent like judy uh eight dollars uh you know has looked really good at some points and has been a little bit you know had some really bad moments too but like oh yeah just, oh yeah yeah but when he when he gets open it's just so fun to watch so you know i really really like that trade for you and then you know moss isn't probably my favorite um you know guy in terms of upside but He's two bucks, and I, I think he could easily be the starting running back for Buffalo going into next season. And while I don't think that's like a you know a ninety dollar player, I do think that has significant significant value on on a two dollar two dollar contract. So yeah, I mean I think you you sorted out a lot of your your future going forward, and you have a lot of options where if if maybe you know Zach Moss doesn't win the job, you still have kind of interesting guys that could still pop. You know, obviously you still have Dobbins. Um, doesn't look like Acres is going to be that guy, but you never know. There's still so much of the season, so you got a couple really, I think, surefire keepers, and then you you filled out the rest of your roster with guys that you're like, we'll we'll see. It's you know, it's your motto for a reason. You, you'll see what they do, <laughs> and then you know you'll have options. Maybe you, you swing a trade in the off season. I, I think you just you did a really good job there. So. Yeah, I mean, I did. I do have to say, I did try and explore a couple of deals at the deadline. It just nothing really fit, especially considering that I do still like Josh Jacobs as a keeper, and I know mm-hmm. everyone was asking about him, <laughs> every single person. Yeah, because yeah, he's he's one of the uniquely kind of cheap guys that you know is useful. Is like a, yeah, you know, really like useful. RB one. Yep. You know, a lot of teams, I'm sure, you know, me included, were. Uh, sniffing around but every team you know yeah. in the end I, I think that might have been the right choice uh for you a lot of the trades probably did make your team you know weaker in the current and you know jacobs himself could be a keeper too like a pretty yeah. decent one even if he's we'll see strong. so yeah i think you, you made the right decision holding him it'll it'll help you you know through the rest of the season i i still think you could you know climb out of nine and ten if, if things go right so you know We'll see, we'll see. But uh, I, I think the rest of your team is like very well set up, so that you didn't, you probably didn't feel pressure to 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 sell off Jacobs, um, you know, to get another keeper just because you 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 did most of your work earlier. Right, and I I you know I do still want to compete and do try to get out of that hole. It's going to be tough though, especially given how I started the season. Um, I will say the last thing here. Uh, me and John had a trade right at the end of the deadline that did not go through. I'm not gonna say it, just so uh, ju- I'm not gonna say the details, oh, wow. but I just wanna say it so that you know people can start thinking about, whoa, what did what did they try to do? Oh, <laughs> why, did, it, it, we, why, why did you start talking about the the almost deadline trade like really late? Just trying, yeah, trying to squeeze on it. Yeah. We we talked about it earlier and we couldn't agree, and then. We got it brought up again at like 11.57, went back and forth, back and forth. And then I said yes at 11.59. Then he uh, had some things on the, the pickups that he had to delete. Yeah. And by that time, it was midnight uh, yeah. and it was over. But it's fine. Like, it's it really, honestly, not that consequential. Just more of a for fun thing. You know how 
the trading enterprise goes. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> that's that's their motto probably. Um, I think New England should have tried to get a. Uh... That, that second round pick that went to LIC. I really would have liked that. Him? Really would have. No, no, not at all. Um, yeah, I didn't even yeah. know. So first of all, I make... Uh, <laughs> I have to apologize, but I make rational assumptions for the yeah, opposing yeah, yeah, team yeah. owner. So I don't add things that I, that I think would be rational for them to keep. So I would never go to LIC or Mars right now and be like, can I get your second round pick for nothing? Yeah. Maybe a second round pick swap or something. Maybe I could yeah. think about that to make it interesting, but right, right. Uh, I wouldn't, moral, I wouldn't ask for that for moral, free. The moral of the story is it, it never hurts to ask. That's true. That's all, a good point. All different teams, all different teams do value players, assets, you know, all very, very differently. I've been very good point. Before where you know I ask someone, oh, what do you, what do you want in return for this player? And it, the, the, the ask is sometimes crazy like high in the other direction or it's just crazy low in the other direction so yeah like in this league it, it is very very beneficial to to always ask as many you know questions regarding trades as possible and i i think that's part of the reason why you know we see some teams being so successful at trades because um they're just you know diligently diligently asking for you know constant valuations of guys that you might have and you know they have such a good grasp of what everyone's thinking of like certain players that right right they can get really creative and pull off trades where to other people in the league you're just like wait whoa that what? guy yeah you didn't like that like that's just <laughs> confusing right but like i think yeah i think so for the teams that are a little less aggressive um you know obviously capital region got a little bit more aggressive this year but you know for the flushings um maybe even the yonkers i you know i the moral is yeah like ask a lot because you never know what what someone else is, you know, valuing super low or, you know, super high on your team. It, it it really doesn't hurt to to ask around as much as you can. And plus, you get a little bit of feel from us, right? Like, yeah, so first yeah. of all, first of all, I think it it you need to practice a lot. You need to do a lot of trades. You can't just not yeah. do them and think that you're going to be good immediately. You have to do and obviously fail a lot, and and so you're going to have to do that. And then second, you get our our show as a great way of getting feedback you know like we're yeah, gonna tell you what our guest. takes are time, yeah sorry every time we have a guest you, you get a little peek in, inside that's of true too what yeah. they think of every team yeah we go over every team and then you might hear you know you know john say like oh yeah like this guy's like really good like you know on a different team and right 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 you're that owner you're like okay like he he kind of he kind of is feeling this this guy so it maybe he, he's a little bit higher on him trade value wise than others you know i'm pretty sure you know you know harlem and michael diaz's uh simulations is probably just you know feed the the whole wonky show into you know, <laughs> uh the dustin and wonky and dustin show into you know a computer and it just like parses through everyone's like positive oh, negative man. Every player, and then you just like you know just some huge huge calculation that that results in a pretty accurate uh simulation so yeah i mean yeah i would i would suggest the teams that are a little bit you know less comfortable on, on on in trades to to really yeah like asking is building experience for for negotiating in trades asking you know someone every week like oh like so what do you think of this player like it, it gives you information on how to you know come up with these really interesting trades and i think virginia is probably my favorite example of that and the last uh, one one last thing that i just thought of i also hate it when i hear that i've won a trade because that to me that to me, I feel like I've gotten something too obvious. There's something wrong. Actually, I like to hear that I've done poorly because that means I've stuck to, I mean, this is more for me personally, where I know that I've stuck to what I evaluate a certain player at. And, uh, you know, it might not be the same as what the market is, what is the most obvious move. But I sometimes like to hear, oh, wow, you did a bad job. You know, you, you messed up that trade. Then I'm thinking mm -hmm. to myself, oh man, I think I got away with a lot of value actually here that yeah. no one's seeing. But I mean, yeah, the it's... general public has been so wrong on yeah. so many trades. That yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it, it, it's definitely not really a good thing to hear like everyone liking your side. It, that's not a good thing. Either. You just have to kind right. of disregard it. Right, right, right. You got to just do what you believe, which uh, I'm sure everyone did uh, at the deadline. So kudos to everyone. Uh, Let's just quickly go over the pickups if you have any in mind. I think, uh, you know, I didn't have much time to look over this, so I'm very surprised that Duke Johnson went for 12 right now. What yeah. happened here? <laughs> what? Who still, who still has that much creation budget? Yeah, that's my first thought. That's like all of my budget, 12 right there. 
<laughs> so that's uh, my first question. Why spend that much? And second is, uh, uh, is David Johnson out? Is that what's going on? Yeah, I think he, he had a concussion, I think, maybe. So he had some injury that um, I'm, I'm guessing Duke Johnson is more likely to start this week. Um, you know, I, I think for Virginia, they concussion, yep. have some injuries right now at running back. Oh, um, Justin Jefferson? Just, yeah, Justin Jackson's out. Uh, Justin Montgomery Jackson, sorry, yeah. He's probably out. And uh, Ronald Jones has kind of been trending down with, um, you know, the whole Tampa Bay offense and his involvement within it. So I, I think they really did need a, a stopgap or something to, to plug in right away. Um, so, yeah, I, I, you know, good for Virginia for still having that much free agent budget to, to spend. But, yeah, I, I was surprised to see a number as high as, uh, 12 at, at this stage in you know the season. I like also that he dropped Gallup, who was yeah. picked up last week, and you know was a drop from a week before that. It's just uh, a really bad year for Gallup. Yeah, just yeah, tough. Went from went from being a keeper, being dropped in season twice by different teams. <laughs> it's pretty rare, I think, for a keeper to end up like that uh, without injury. Yep, that's pretty sad. I will say. Um, I I uh, I will say that I, I had to pick up a defense. I got boomed here again. I, it's just been a really, really bad year for me on the waiver wire where mm -hmm. I just keep getting boomed by the defenses. Obviously, the Saints defense was the best pickup this week. They uh, yeah. Virginia spent six really great, and I think this is going to be massive for him and probably a must win, I think, for him at four and five. He needs to win against LIC. Don't take that for granted. You want to pick up the best defense. That's great. Yeah. And then Capital Region also picked up a really great defense in Minnesota. Um, they've had their, you know, really famous stories of how the defense is not working for them in 2020. And then that left me with Indy. It's just really not good. And I, it's I'm gonna start it, but I'm not feeling great. It's 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 pretty bad. But Indy Indy is actually a really good defense according to like. Uh... You know, in talent, opponent, yeah. Opponent, opponent adjusted. Uh, yeah, system. yeah. In talent, they are. But yeah, Tennessee uh, is a Tennessee's a good offense. offense. Yeah. So, but either way, it's just that kind of year for me. So it's okay. And the other options aren't that great, honestly. But it's it's whatever. Um, I really like the DeAndre Washington pickup actually by Capital Region. So this is where I think uh, uh, Capital Region has been really good on the waiver wire this year, picking up Robbie Anderson. Um, and, and some and some a couple really good players uh, off the waiver wire and I think DeAndre Washington could be an interesting player um, where he could become a starter for the Dolphins we don't know uh, because they just picked him up the real life team just picked him up uh, a week or two ago uh, yeah. from the Chiefs I believe but uh, if he adjusts well and he picks up that playbook he's one of the players that contributed for me last year in the, play, in the yeah. championship yeah. week because I lost Josh Jacobs and he filled in really really well with 17 18 points maybe washington can become a starter in miami kind of do the same kind of role for uh for this year and uh you know helps capital region in the playoffs who knows yeah uh, another pickup i really liked was uh i know we've been making fun of the the kj hamler uh push by uh oakland but i actually do really like that pickup um i, I could see him breaking out kind of in the second half of the season he just had a a pretty big game and you know the, the coaching staff and, and Locke uh, talk him up quite a bit. So, you know. Um, Wait, KJ you know, Hamler I, was picked up by LIC? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, saying yeah. Oakland. Oh, yeah, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, Oakland, Oakland was pumped him up. up yeah, yeah, yeah. All year. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We, we kind of laughed a little bit at it because he was, you know, probably pushing it very, a little bit harder than um, Hamler deserved early on. But I, I do think, you know, for, for a $2 pickup at this stage, um, one of the more interesting names that, that has – a little bit of draft capital invested in him. He, you know, right, he has right. Talent. So, yep. yeah, I, I like that. Just LSE doing LSE things, you know, picking up yeah. really useful players. Yeah. Uh, and then Harlem picking up another Jacksonville Jaguars quarterback. Oh, of course, of course. He's filling in until Minshew's back. So yeah, yeah. And and, and <laughs> Luton, I think he's. Been, I I was joking around with uh with how he brought Chark back, but it's been okay because he's got that big arm he's not the greatest qb obviously but uh he's got a big arm so you can get the ball down the field uh and if chark is getting open down the field then that's going to be a beautiful pickup uh hook up there um and, and a beautiful pickup for for harlem for uh maybe a couple weeks and i think there there isn't that much else i picked up josh reynolds and uh i'll be honest i'm gonna start him against you so uh 
Interesting. So, <laughs> actually, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna start him, but I'm I'm kind of joking. He has a really good matchup this week, and if Cooper comes, yeah, yeah. if no, Cooper comes out, then I I actually think I he's in heavy heavy yeah. consideration for me to, to, nah, to play. Seattle defense is pretty ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even for Jared Goff, even for uh, a run first, a quote unquote run first offense, like it's gonna be, uh, I think a good day for anyone of those wide receivers. So. Uh, we'll see, and I uh, I have to make the the choices because I think I have a couple players to, to choose from. But in any case, I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, did you have any last words before we uh, get right into week ten? No, we're yeah we're going right into the stretch run. Um, should be really interesting how how some of these teams, especially because there's. You know, huge playoff implications in a lot of these uh, matchups. You know, I right. you know at six and three, you know, I, team's very good on paper, but I don't even think I'm super super safe. Um, obviously, it would take some pretty bad uh, upsets, but you know, it's gonna need some monitoring down the stretch, I think. Um, and it, it, you know, last last couple of weeks is gonna be pretty bonkers, I think, with all the teams in contention. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. Um, I'll be updating the simulator that I made, but we'll see. Uh, how these these matchups for this week will affect that. Um, I, I, know, I know I gave Yonkers a very, very low percentage chance, but there is still a chance for you. Um, there's still a chance for a couple of teams, um, for many teams, actually, uh, majority of the, of the league. So it's going to be interesting to see how this all finishes. And I, I will lastly mention that we are still doing who you got. We're just doing it a lot off air because we run out of time. But uh, for now, I think it's pretty even between me and Dustin. It's 2020. Yeah. And if it's, once I crazy how yeah it's just so hard to fill in. Week, so. Yeah, I need to fill in for last week, but once I do that, I think it's gonna be close regardless. I don't think anyone yeah, did yeah. really well, but uh, we will be continuing that, and hopefully we can get that on air uh, yeah. in a future once episode. We're, we're, yeah, we're past the trade deadline. I think we'll we'll definitely have time for that. So. Yep. Uh, thanks everyone, and we'll see you next week.